Well, after four years, Gnomes and Goblins VR, the demo from 2016 that everyone loved, has finally released on HTC Vive, Oculus, and the Index. And the price tag is $30. Is it worth it after all this time? First off, fair warning, this game is beefy. With a 1080 Ti being the minimum recommended video card, you might need to turn the graphics down if you have an older card. The download itself is also over 13 gigs. As I said, beefy. Gnomes and Goblins is already getting some bad reviews on Steam for not running well, even with decent setups. Speaking only from my own experience, outside of a little stuttering early on, the game ran fine for me with a 1080 Ti. Following a little gnome, following a little gnome. So, on to the game itself, Gnomes and Goblins, how did they expand this demo into a full game? On Steam, the story promises an enchanted forest to explore as you join forces with little goblins and help them defeat their foe. This game certainly delivers on that. This is a breathtaking, gorgeous world to take in. The detail makes the food look delicious, and the goblin homes feel warm and toasty. Oh, the lights came on. When did you bring me? And then there's the shrinking ability, which is another level of wow. Hi, little slug. You can shrink down to goblin Whoa. level, and the scale of the forest is breathtaking. Oh my gosh. I will tell you, this right here is more immersive than Half-Life Alex, as far as feeling like you are in another place. I'm impressed. Well done. This is quite the pulley system you've arranged. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, just the sense of scale. I mean, I really feel like it's like we're on a skyscraper right now. Hey, you little gnome. You're yeah, gonna get it. Oh! You missed. It'll be your last mistake. In the story, when the gnomes start a turf war with the goblins by kidnapping one of them, you get sent out on a wild river chase to get them back. The visuals, the water effects, the incoming oranges from the gnomes. Come here. Ow. Don't you laugh at me. Gnome more messing around. Come on, push faster. We've got to get him out. All of the detail is truly remarkable. Gotta get some NOS on this thing, I know. Late, look at the road. Ooh. One small complaint is with the walking. When you're trying to push the joystick forward, you might accidentally turn 30 degrees, which can get very frustrating. Other than that, the sound design and lighting effects... Ah, ah, ah. Do you have any bombs? We need a bomb. Blow this tunnel. The creatures and attention to detail... Looks like a bug's life. The fat little caterpillar. You guys are assholes. Oh! It all comes together to create this magical, interactive Pixar movie you're living in. I am your god. And that's where we get to Gnomes and Goblins' biggest problem, and what most people will have a problem with. I wrapped up the actual story of the game in a little under an hour. That's a short Pixar movie. And I felt like I was taking my time to look around and explore a lot, so an hour of playtime felt lackluster. There is more content after the story finishes. You can find special items to add to your treehouse. You can plant a full garden, take a cruise on the streamboat, or just explore the forest. Whoa. Whoa. Can I take two? Yeah, I can. There's gonna be a gnome barbecue tonight. For how good looking this game is and how immersive, I say it's worth the price tag if you have a beefy PC to accommodate it. Otherwise, wait for that Steam sale or wait until you upgrade. But bottom line, despite the short story, I'm genuinely impressed with the relaxing, enchanting experience Weaver and John Favreau created. Oh. <laughs> it's family-friendly escapism at its best. And don't we all need an escape right now? Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel in the corner so you don't miss future videos.